A frenum is basically a thin fold of mucous membrane with enclosed muscle fibers that attaches the lips and the cheek to the alveolar mucosa, the gingiva and the underlying periosteum. Phrenectomy means removal of the frenum. But if it's a natural structure, why does it require removal? The frenum is considered as pathogenic and requires removal when abnormal frenal attachment is present which causes a midline diastema, when the frenum is too close to the gingival margin and when it causes gingival recession, when there is no apparent zone of attached gingiva along the midline, this means the frenum has made the vestibule too shallow. This can complicate the construction of a denture. In this case, the frenum needs to be removed. Blanche test is the most commonly used method for the diagnosis of a high frenum attachment. In this test, the frenum is pulled and we have to see if there is any movement of the papillary tip or if any blanching is produced. This indicates that the frenum is attached on a high level. The abnormal frenal attachments can be treated by phrenectomy or phrenotomy. There is difference between these two terms. Phrenectomy means complete removal of the frenum, including its attachment to the underlying bone and phrenotomy is the incision and relocation of the frenal attachment. Surgical techniques for phrenectomy are the simple excision technique, Z-plasty technique. These two are effective when the mucosal and fibrous tissue band is narrow. When the frenal attachment has a wide base, localized vestibuloplasty with secondary epithelization is preferred. Fourth technique is laser-assisted phrenectomy. Now let's see how these surgeries are done. First, we need anesthesia. So for phrenectomies, local infiltration is usually sufficient. But the local anesthetic should not be administered directly in the frenum because it can distort the anatomy of the frenum. And we need to visualize the anatomy properly at the time of excision. A surgical assistant can evert the lip during the procedure. In simple excision technique, we need two curved hemostats. One hemostat is placed on the top part of the frenum, the part that is towards the anterior nasal spine. Holding the frenum to the depth of the vestibule and the other hemostat is placed on the bottom part of the frenum, towards the alveolus. And using a number 15 blade, two incisions are made. One incision is made along the top of the upper hemostat and the other incision is made along the lower 